Welcome to Automotive Basic Knowledge. Our topic for today is about brake fluid fundamentals and testing. In this discussion we covered Introduction of brake fluid Brake fluid compatibility Brake fluid boiling point How to test the brake fluid Why you should change the brake fluid Brake fluid is used in hydraulic brake and hydraulic operated clutch as a hydraulic fluid to transfer force into pressure, as well to amplify braking force in motor vehicle hydraulic brake systems or amplify pushing force at clutch hydraulic systems. Brake fluids must have certain characteristics and meet certain quality standards for the braking system such as the International or USD, O, T or Department of Transportation. The most common brake fluids which are used today, are glycolether based, marked as D, O, T3, D, O, T4 and D, O, T5.1. In some rare cases, can be used silicone based fluids marked as D, O, T5. Also, another not widely used in the automotive industry is D, O, T2 oil based brake fluid. It has the lowest wet and dry boiling points of all the brake fluid types. Brake fluid compatibility. Compatibility is determined by chemical characteristics of the fluid, so the brake system materials must be compatible with the used brake fluid. Typically D, O, T3, D, O, T4 and D, O, T5.1 brake fluids, generally are compatible with most brake system materials except in the case of some silicone rubber external components such as caliper piston boots which are attacked by silicone fluids and greases. Brake fluids with different D, O, T ratings cannot always be mixed or replaced. It must be of the same type or of the same rating at least. For example, D, O, T3 can be replaced with D, O, T4 or D, O, T5.1, as well D, O, T4 can be replaced with D, O, T5.1. Silicone based D, O, T5 is not compatible and should not be mixed with any of D, O, T3, D, O, T4, or D, O, T5.1, because, mixing of glycol with silicone fluid may cause corrosion as a result of trapped moisture. Also, generally the seals used in DOT5 brake system are not compatible with other glycolether based brake fluids. If your vehicle uses some of D, O, T3, D, O, T4, D, O, T5 or D, O, T5.1 brake fluid type, then is not recommended to be added or to be replaced with D, O, T2 oil based type of brake fluid. Brake fluid boiling point. Brake fluids must have enough high boiling point to avoid vaporizing in some critical parts of the braking system which operating at relatively high temperatures especially in the wheel disc brake calipers as well wheel cylinders of drum brakes. The minimum boiling points according to dot type are shown in the table. The wet boiling points are defined as 3.7% water by volume. The brake fluids will exhibit a reduced boiling point as water content increases. For example, the brake fluid of dot 3 type if there is 1% of water, moisture accumulation the boiling point will decrease to 188 degrees Celsius, 370 degrees Fahrenheit. If there is 2% of water, the boiling point will decrease to 160 degrees Celsius, 320 degrees Fahrenheit. And if there is 3% it will decrease to 145 degrees Celsius, 295 degrees Fahrenheit. How to test the brake fluid? There are several methods of testing the brake fluid and the tests are mainly checking the content of water into the fluid as well as visually, by checking the color of the fluid to find out about the contamination. More the darker color of the fluid means there is more amount of contamination and is a sign of a required change. Typically used testers for testing the percentage of water absorption are device for moisture content testing, refractometer, voltmeter, etc. The moisture content device operates by monitoring the temperature of a small heating element immersed in the fluid as the element is heated. The temperature of the element levels off briefly at the boiling point of the fluid, indicating the moisture content of the fluid. 
testing with the refractometer is, in the same way, like when is testing the engine coolant fluid for freezing temperature. Get an example of the fluid and make a reading. The conductivity of the brake fluid increases as the content of contaminants increases, such as water content for example. So, also a voltmeter can be used to measure the conductivity of the brake fluid into the master cylinder reservoir. Put one of the voltmeter probe into the fluid in the master cylinder reservoir, and the other probe just connected to the mass, the body of the master cylinder. A reading of 0.3 DC volts is the maximum limit. If the voltage is higher this indicates a galvanic reaction which means there is an unacceptable level of moisture in the brake fluid and is a sign of the required change. Why you should change the brake fluid? The glycol-based brake fluid, D, O, T3, D, O, T4, and D, O, T5.1, should be flushed, or changed periodically under normal usage conditions according to the manufacturer schedule for periodic fluid changes to ensure reliability and safety. For every type of vehicle, the change interval is individual, usually on every 2 to 3 years, or on every 25,000 km to 50,000 km or 15,000 miles to 30,000 miles, in some cases and earlier, depending on operating conditions and type of brake system. The main issues why is needed periodic brake fluid changes are related to the chemical and physical characteristics of the fluid, as well working conditions such as, hygroscopicity or water absorption, corrosion, system contamination, slugging, reducing to boiling point, etc. Glycol-based fluids D, O, T3, D, O, T4, D, O, T5.1 are readily miscible with water. The brake fluids will exhibit a reduced boiling point as water content increases. Long-term brake system water content tends to reach a maximum of about 3 to 4 percent, which is readily handled by the corrosion inhibitors in the brake fluid formulation. Since the inhibitors are gradually depleted as they do their job, glycol brake fluid, the same like ethylene glycol antifreezes, needs to be changed periodically. The swelling of the rubber components such as piston, cylinder rubber seals and similar, as well as the friction, are one of the most common issues that cause the contamination into the brake system. Small amount of a contaminant is enough to make damage, if you enjoying reading and watching of this video. Click the like button or provide your comment below. Thank you.